So just in case you don't have enough ways to make payments, Apple just announced Apple Pay Later. So this is my curious and quirky topic because I just think there's so many angles to this. If you're a small business or a consumer, you're going to benefit. And if you're a larger company where you're trying to figure out how to disrupt a market, there's some lessons here. And um, and also if you're being disrupted in any way. So according to Jason Ayton, um, he's the columnist of Apple Pay Later provides users with seamless and secure way to split their payments into four equal payments spread over six weeks with no interest and no fees. So Apple Pay Later is available everywhere that Apple Pay is is accepted and is through a MasterCard um, network. And basically what Apple is doing is extending a hassle-free, short-term, interest-free loan to customers. And the businesses won't see a difference either because they get paid up front. Apple has been plotting this for some time now. Let's look at their pathway. Seven years ago, Apple introduced Apple Pay, which was a simple way to have users tap their iPhone. And uh, then the company added a, an ability for businesses to accept Apple Pay on their online stores. Three years ago, Apple introduced its own credit card. So, And you could get a titanium card if you ordered it to go along with it. And it let customers pay over a period of time. Now, earlier this year, Apple launched a service where users can accept payments on their iPhones without having to have any kind of a external third-party terminal. So Apple Pay right now accounts for about 5% of the credit card transactions, which doesn't seem like a lot. But now that Apple is focused on buy now, pay later, we'll see what happens. The analyst accessed the buy now, pay later market, by the way, at $125 billion, growing more than 25% per year. So it's a hot place. So what do we think Apple's doing with this? Who is their target audience? Although there are more than a billion users of iPhones, it seems like it's a fairly small niche that may be appropriate for the service. If you get paid every week, maybe that, that payment sequence will help you, right? Oh, it's over six weeks. But if you get paid monthly, I'm not sure how that payment cadence really is going to help. The value proposition to customers, then it helps them have an interest-free way of paying in a time when interest rates are soaring. So that's good. And they don't require any additional payment information because they pretty much have all of our information anyway. And then to retailers, they can start right up. Apple has uh, relationships with over 85% of the retailers. And there's no additional setup required. Like there's a competitor, a firm that they still are kind of set up where you have checkout process. Uh, Customers have to really jump through hoops just to sign up for the privilege to use their cards. Really, really difficult. And, you know, and I look at everything here. What is Apple's real goal? Because they don't even take a cut of Apple Pay. So I think what they want to do is own the entire experience. Apple is disrupting this market because it adds tremendous value to the iPhone. The more valuable services that they have on the iPhone, the more that we're likely to, you know, replace our iPhones more frequently. And if you remember a couple of seasons ago or episodes ago, I had mentioned that they had seen that people were replacing their phones every three years instead of every two years. So subscription services and this type of service can help really accelerate that. And probably what's going to happen is, is that additional revenue from the phones is worth a whole lot more than just that buy now, pay later market of $125 billion. Reassess your segmentation, look at your value props, and always keep the customer's experience in mind.